Says Allah Ta'ala has put ajeeb unique barakat and blessings. When an individual, most of all, for an individual, most of all, when he faces difficult circumstances, difficult scenarios, especially when the individual, when the person starts to practice the deen, the path of the deen, when he initiates his journey on the deen, he says that I'm going to now pr- practice the deen, pray salah, and follow the sunnah then a very, this is a very big change and reformation for him in his life. And at that time, the biggest attack is of shaitans. Shaitans is the biggest attack. Shaitan, he doesn't want that the human being, he practices the deen, follows the religion, the way, and that he earns for the hereafter, and that he makes his hereafter. Shaitan doesn't want that. As a human being, just as a human being in the beginning, in the initial period when he's practicing the deen, he tries to strengthen himself, tries to become strong. He wants to be regular and punctual in amal, in practicing deeds. Then in the same way, with the same strength, shaitan attacks that person. But shaitan has a lot of tricks, a lot of methods, a lot of plans. So in this, he makes that human being, that person, lose hope and get frustrated and he tries that via that frustration and loss of hope that this insan human being gets detached from the deen so he shaitan makes that individual upset and sad and this emotion this feeling for a human being is a very weird situation for that person a sad situation for that person and waswasas come evil thoughts come negative thoughts come weakness comes and from every angle from every side there are attempts and and ways to try to make him weak and lose hope and make him sad so this feeling this emotion the quran has mentioned this as well that whereas the uh, one during one expedition the muslims didn't have many resources the initial days of deen probably was the expedition of badr and then the opposing forces came with full uh, resources they had weapons and they had their plans and their strength they came for the expedition for the clash so when they came to the plain uh, for clashing and with a lot of fuss and pomp and grandeur, then the Muslims at that time were very few in number and they had not much with them to have that clash and maybe the resources they had that they had a stick or a staff with which they would hit maybe one sword that one person only would use that's all they had so at that time shaitan then attacked and shaitan tried to influence the sahaba the noble companion says, what are you doing? How can you win over these others? This is totally not possible at all, he said. And then at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened the sahaba. The noble companions then from their tongues came, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil, subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this is a great cure, great solution. Whenever this feeling overwhelms a person, when he starts to feel down, distressed due to thoughts and difficulties, what shall I do now? And the deen, he starts to get weak in practicing the deen. Then this kalima, alhamdulillah, it suddenly gives assistance to the individual. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. So at any time when a person practices the deen, then he shouldn't lose hope. He shouldn't get frustrated and feel down. And never look towards rewards. Don't look for rewards. I'm praying salah, why don't I get this? X, Y, Z. I'm practicing this, why am I not getting this specific benefit? Why am I not completing or fulfilling my uh, targets? Uh, the prize predecessor has given a beautiful solution for this. That you keep practicing and leave your affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Entrust your affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We have to do our duty. The orders that we've been given, we just need to implement them. That's it. Don't look towards, I'm not getting any benefit, or what am I attaining by this practice. All of these are shaitan's evil thoughts and makes us lose hope that he doesn't let us practice. He knows that this is the path of Allah and his Rasul. We know that, that these are the orders of Allah and his Rasul. And the pious predecessor followed this path, then it's the right path. Then it's the right path. Now we are attaining something or not, but one thing definitely the Qur'an has told us is that definitely you are attaining the hereafter. For sure, we don't need the dunya. We don't need material things to attain. We're not practicing deeds to earn the world. We're not practicing deeds to... Uh, we're not doing dhikr adhkar to earn the material things so we could progress in the dunya and our wealth and our children. Yes, this is the waswas of shaitan. That we don't get this for deen is Whatever's in your destiny you're going to get. Yes, uh, if you want to... Whatever you're going to do physically to attain, you'll get. It's in front of you. But he makes us weak and feel down and distressed. And it's not just for those who are starting off practicing the Even people who are on the higher levels experience, even they get afraid and anxious. The oh, um, well, am I getting successful or not here? Will I attain success here? So, I'd like to just mention a point. This is Marifa connection to Allah and because alhamdulillah you are salik you're on that journey and these conditions do surround us during the life so I'm requesting and sharing this with Hazrat Mujaddad al Thani rahmatullah alayh may Allah have mercy on him one of his murid students who was on a high rank high status murid student and he wrote on one occasion to Hazrat um, and he presented his um, condition his condition, his emotions, his feelings, and he shared that. Just like uh, whenever a person, he has uh, experiences, observations, like I told you some previous examples. So whenever the individual, he starts off in the path, the journey towards Allah, via tasawwuf, via adhkar, via remembrance, then at that time, upon the individual, he gets maqam, levels of marifa, nainis to Allah. Spiritual. So, Definitely a person passes through observations, experiences. So he wrote and shared his feelings, his emotions to Hazrat Mujaddad al-Aftani, his, his sheikh. That I've arrived to this hal, I've arrived to this uh, level, and he shared his darja, his status. So now, he said, everything in front of me is, uh, you could say, worthless. I, I can't see anything, he said. Yes, I can see with my eyes. But I don't realize there's someone here or not. He said, I'm detached. I look at the heavens, the skies are gone. I look down at the earth, the earth is gone. I look at human beings, there's nobody there. There's a feeling that comes over a person through a dhikr ilaj, which we call. So on that maqam, he arrived to that status. In San, the human being is that if, for example, you pray shirak and go and you see a good dream, after sunrise, you think, oh, I'm a pious person. I was enough, isn't it? The desires of a person props him up. Oh, my dhikr is going good. I saw a nice dream. I'm looking at good visions now. I've arrived to the high status. I'm a big sheikh now. I'm a teacher now. It's a guarantee yeah, because I've seen a good dream. So I'm pious. So this happens to a person. This happens to a student when he's practicing and he's passing through the levels of tasawwuf. And so all of this is nafs. All of this is desire. So he was a big sheikh, actually. And as I said to you, he was a Hazrat Mujid al Thani's murid on a high level, high status. So he came across to this position. Then he wrote to his sheikh that whenever I see everything, I can't see the atmosphere, I can't see the sky, I can't see the people. So it looks like to me that I'm on the high grade now. And I've, um, I've arrived and I've completed the levels and the tasks so it's like I'm a big sheikh. So I'm just giving you his reference that how a person passes through these experiences. So so he wrote that I think I've completed my tasks now and I've got to a high position. So I don't think I need to do anything more. And it looks to me, it seems to me that I shouldn't come to you now because I haven't got anything else. I've got everything I needed. So he's showing this, expressing his observation experience to his sheikh, teacher. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, now listen to the answer of the sheikh, subhanallah. 
what he says. Very beneficial for us in the future, alhamdulillah. And, that, and look at the answer that he gave to his student, to his shagir. He said that, listen, this waswasa, negative thought, it shows to you that you've gone to a very high position now, this thought, and you have arrived to a high rank that you don't need anything now. Now I'll tell you the reality of what this means. What a beautiful answer he gave. He said, what you have just shared with me, this position, this, this position, this is not even, this is not even if a person, for example, practices dhikr on his first lesson, Latifa Qalb. Yes, then this experience, the maqam, this is the maqam of Latifa Qalb, which is the first lesson of the sawwuf. And what is the maqam? He said the maqam is this, that basically what you're sharing with me, even if you don't even do the one quarter, 25% of Latifa Qalb, which you have to practice, you haven't even experienced, you know, one, one quarter of that, of Latifa Qalb on the heart. So you tell me that how subhanallah, Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, within Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, the maqamat, the ranks, the levels Allah Ta'ala's given. He said that you haven't even, from the four parts of Latifa Qalb, you haven't even arrived into the f- one of the parts of Latifa Qalb and this feeling has overcome you. So what happens is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala doesn't demonstrate or show physically the emotions to the student on, on the work that he's doing. Why? Because if Allah Ta'ala shows that, makes it apparent, makes it visible, then that person, he gets lost in that and he thinks that's it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so whenever an individual is practicing, doing an amal for which Allah Ta'ala has bestowed him and told us the rewards, then it's not necessary that you'll see the rewards because by seeing the rewards or your levels or your rank, it's dangerous. But in reality, he's attaining that result. He's attaining the result. Just like, um, for example, you, when you start focusing on Latifi Qalb, Latifa Ruh, these are great maqamats, they are levels that hal that when an individual sits and does dhikr of Allah on Latifa Qalb, he does dhikr just that alone, alhamdulillah, then a person arrives to this maqam, to this level. I hope that you are understanding what I'm saying or not. So don't lose hope, don't get frustrated. Shaitan makes us feel frustrated. The kalimat Allah has given to us to read, they strengthen in a person's courage and determination. That's why the Quran has mentioned these verses. So this is one point, that when you are practicing a sabak in the Naqshbandi silsala, you've been taught a lesson, then you are not empty. You're not empty. If according to that you're practicing just like your shaykh has told you regularly, punctually, and the conditions he's given, you are fulfilling them, then alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, you are, you are going on the maqamat, the levels that are defined. Because as Mujaddad al-Iftani rahmatullah said that I, he didn't read these, he didn't study these, they weren't there present in the books before. But Hazrat Mujaddad rahmatullah, he experienced these maqamat and saw these with his eyes. He observed this, then he described these to his students and he presented these learnings. So there are two parts here now. One is that, two learnings here. That the human being, when he practices the sawwuf, and the shaykh explains to him what to do, that maqam, we can't see that, the result of our efforts. But those maqamat, the levels are there, because Allah Ta'ala has demonstrated them to the great shaykh, and he's described them to us. He's explained them to us. So this is a very high maqam, high rank for an individual. When will he see that? As soon as a person dies, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show him, make him visible his maqam, his rank to him, that you worked hard during your life and you were looking for this, you wanted a good result. So these levels that we had given, first stage, second stage, fourth stage, latifa qalb, latifa rul, latifa sar, latifa khafi, and as you went up those levels and you made effort, you are arriving, you are actually getting them. You are being granted them. I hope uh, this is, will encourage you inshallah and you will keep doing your duty and don't get frustrated, don't follow the waswasas and the negative thoughts. So that's shaitan always taking the person back down, flinging us back down. So when you're reciting the kalimat, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal we were reciting this is the greatest cure, best cure that we believe to increase our belief and faith on our journey, on our efforts, 
and hard work that alhamdulillah even though we despite we don't feel it we can't see it we haven't seen a good dream or any emotions we don't feel it it doesn't matter at all but if you're traveling inshallah you are on this maqam if you're practicing you are on these maqams and you are there there's another thing also we need to see how great a lesson this is that we are students we are students until death we are students until death because that's the waswasa that comes in his mind. Oh, I've completed my level, Sheikh, so have I finished now? This is not the case. We haven't completed anything. So we should know and be aware that we are students and our journey has not ended yet. So we have to try and struggle to get and attain all the maqam. The levels which are written, Latifa Qalb, Latifa Ru, 35 lessons we have, Alhamdulillah. So try to earn these, try to acquire these, and you will get them. Yes, if you're not getting them, that means you're not making a proper effort and a struggle, you're not working hard, you are weak somewhere, you are lacking somewhere. So we should have the concern for this, that why am I not getting more results? This is the main thing. This is the main thing. Why am I not progressing? Why am I not advancing? Why am I not going from Latifa Qalb to Ru? Why am I not going from Latifa Ru to Sar? From Latifa Sar, why am I not going to Latifa Khafi? That every maqam, every level in, within it is so much different, more than the heavens and the earth. Those who have seen this, they know this. They've explained this as a mujaddad uh, in his description. So he says that more than this, the maqam goes higher with the latifas. So why are we not? Am I not? Why am I not progressing, advancing? What's the reason behind this? This is not actually progression that you are looking at these things. Do you understand my point? Progression is that you are attaining that maqam. In other words, you are attaining the next rank, the next lesson. You're working hard. That's what it means getting the result. Not your feeling, observing. For example, you're on latifa qalb, you get the next lesson, latifa ru. It means alhamdulillah, you've got it. You've attained it. So this is a big, good piece of news for a person that he has gone from one class to another class. So in this, what we should try to do is a person sh is that don't look for things, observations, experience, emotions in his heart. He thinks his progression or dreams are progression or kashf karamat and miracles. These are, without this, you can see these things. Without the, what we're doing, we can do things. You don't need the sawaf. Hindus and Sikhs, they see these things as well. So this is not achievement. This is not achievement. The reality is the maqam that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned to attain them. We are working hard. We're doing the tasks. That's the main thing. Practically. Practically. So how much a person then gets determination, more courage. Alhamdulillah, I've got another lesson. I've got another lesson. I've got the higher lesson. So as a person works hard, makes effort, implements. I've told you the principles prior. So take all of those principles. Alhamdulillah, what are they? Rabta Sheikh. Connection with the teacher. Yes? Look at what you're lacking, that I've got not enough fuel in my car, that's why it's not driving. You know you're driving on the motorway and your car stops or breaks down. And you've got a nice high class BMW or whatever other car is good. You, and all other cars are driving past you, small cars are passing by you, second, uh, look, second hand cars, whatever, they're all passing by you. And then you should think that the reason is that in my car, there's a defect present in my car. There's something lacking that it's not driving. And that I have to take that, remove the defect from the car. Don't blame the car. Do you understand my point? Yeah. So if you're not getting more higher lessons, more status, more rank, higher position, it means there must be something is lacking inside us. That's stopping you to uh, progress and advance. Hopefully you will have understood what I'm saying. I hope so. Okay, so inshallah, uh, be brave, be determined, courageous. As long as you're alive, keep struggling, making effort, work hard to get higher achievement, make your target. I started this journey, I found a sheikh, a teacher, I need to work and make effort, to get all the lessons which alhamdulillah in our next bandi order, in our silsila. And if you're not getting them, you're not earning them, then what you should do is feel in yourself that there must be a defect within me, I'm weak somewhere within. So I should uh, recover myself and improve myself. Okay? Understood? Recite the Ruchiri. I hope you like this lesson after Fajr. Yeah, it's very nice things coming to my mind.
Alhamdulillah. Very useful, beneficial. Very useful, mashallah.